Well, it's great to welcome former Michigan State University Spartan football quarterback Bill Burke to the program. Bill was a quarterback for the Spartans in the Nick Saban regime from 1996 through 99. And Bill has written a book called Victory Outside the Arena, How Athletes Can Go from Isolated to Inspired Once the Applause Begins to Fade. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Bill, great to have you on MSU today. It's great to be here. Love uh, always coming back and uh, venturing into the stadium. Got to say hello to Sparty, uh, the statue <laughs> in the lobby on the way in. So uh, any chance to be on campus uh, is a lot of fun. And, of course, you know, having great conversations is uh, one of my favorite things to do anyway. So, Bill, take us back. What first attracted you to MSU? Why did you come here? Well, I was a football player in high school. It was my first love from the time that I was, you know, five years old. So I always wanted to play on TV at a big school in these big games. Um, so when I got the opportunity late in my recruiting journey, late in the recruiting season, you know, before my, my senior year, um, you know, Michigan State, when I took a visit here, it just looked like the picture of what I had envisioned in my mind. You know, the river running through campus, uh, the beautiful architecture, uh, just a very – warm and homey feel uh, to the whole environment. So uh, once I stepped on campus, uh, even though I stepped on campus in January, amid all the snow uh, for my visit, I just knew that that was going to be my future home. So, and, and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made because I've chosen um, to raise my family here now because I loved it that much, even though I'm originally from Ohio. And Bill, I got to ask you about a couple of the classic games from your time here. That 98 win at number one Ohio State, arguably the biggest upset in Spartan football history. What do you remember? Well, I remember a lot. You know, I remember going into that game, um, you know, nobody really gave us a chance. You know, we were 28-point underdogs. That's a pretty big number in today's world of college football where a lot of people are competitive, especially at the highest levels and the biggest conferences. So, you know, we were excited to go down there and, and take on the challenge, but we knew what was ahead of us. And, uh you know, I think uh, Nick Saban, who was our coach, he, he instilled, uh, you know, a mindset in us that week that was the, really the birth of his now famous process, you know, just taking every play one, one play at a time. And he actually inspired the basis of my book, which is just every play lasts for six seconds. So if you can just, as he put it, stick your hand in the fire for those six seconds and only focus on that. Forget about that big scoreboard and the horseshoe and what the score is and how the game's going and how it's going to end. Let's just focus on those six seconds, and then when that play's over, let's reset and do it all over again. And if you can continue to take every play with that mindset, then you know everything else will take care of itself. And I think that's what really what uh, helped us win that football game because if we had chosen a different mindset, the odds, I think, would have seemed insurmountable. So long story short, we were able to uh, hang in there and keep swinging with the with the big undefeated Ohio State. And, and uh, lo and behold, uh, through the play of a lot of great players that stepped up, especially on defense, um, our kicker had five field goals that day, Paul Edinger. Um, it was the coming out party for a lot of our players that would go on to the NFL. So uh, just a special day in my memory and, and hopefully a, a special day for Spartan fans. And that 99 team, arguably Nick's best before he left, you ended up winning the 2000 Citrus Bowl too. What about that 99 game you beat Michigan and a guy named Tom Brady? <laughs> you know, that's uh, that you just brought up the two favorite memories yeah. in terms of uh, between the white lines for me. Uh, that 99 game was really special for a lot of reasons. Number one, the situation that year was similar to what it was two years before when we had Michigan coming into Spartan Stadium. Both teams were undefeated, high hopes uh, for the season, and then we, of course, didn't even really make it a competitive game. They were much better that year. They went on to win the national title. So a lot of people were uh, on edge about whether or not 99 would be a repeat of that 97 game, and we were determined to, to have a different outcome. So, um, yeah, they came to town. They were Number three, we were 11, uh, ESPN College Game Day was there, the whole nine yards, uh, but we were, we were a different team that year. In, we were a different team even than we were the year before when we beat Ohio State. We didn't go to a bowl game that year, very inconsistent, but 99, we were starting to figure out who we were as a team, and uh, we, you know, we knew going in, and even if we got a big lead, which we did in the third quarter, that they weren't just going to throw in the towel and give us the win, so they came back, and it was down to the final minute, you know, when we had to get a uh, uh, first down offensively uh, to seal the game, and that's exactly what we did. We broke a lot of records that day, and, and just uh, it, was, it was completely magical and, and something I'll never forget. And, Bill, you played for arguably, maybe not even arguably, the greatest college football coach of all time. What did you learn from Nick Saban? 
Well, that's a, that's a, a, that's a big question. Uh, so many things. You know, I tell people that I had the good fortune of having a front row seat to one of the best CEOs in the entire country in any industry, not just in sports, uh, because the guy is so talented, not just as a football coach, but as a manager, as a fundraiser, as a leader, as a motivator. Uh, he's just amazing in terms of what he instills in everybody. And I mentioned one of the earlier lessons, but, uh, you know, his attention to detail, uh, his ability to get inside the heads of players and understand what motivates them individually. Uh, and then his, his standard, you know, he really has a standard for how he expects things to be done. And uh, he doesn't let the seams of that organization start to come apart in any way on any level because I think he understood that if you start to let certain things slide, then over time it might not be visible right away, but over time, um, you know, the, the production and the outcomes are going to start to slip. So I just feel so fortunate to have been a part of all of that. Uh, I was in his first recruiting class and then, you know, being able to see his success after he left Michigan State and knowing that his process at Alabama wasn't really any different than it was here. So that tells you something right there in terms of knowing what you need to do to get the results that you want and then sticking to those every single day um, with a lot of patience but a lot of persistence at the same time. So, Bill Burke, tell us what you're doing now. What's the Podium Group? I'm with the Podium Group, which is a financial services uh, firm. We are made up of a group of former, former athletes, uh, and the idea is that we've been to the podium ourselves in the athletic space. So we are trying to help people that are at the podium now in the business world, in the sports world. We want to help them build and create their financial legacies and keep them at the podium because they've worked so hard to get there in the first place. So let's talk about your book, Bill. It's Victory Outside the Arena, as I said, how athletes can go from isolated to inspired once the applause begins to fade. What led you to, to write a book? What was the motivation? Well, as I mentioned, from the time I was five years old, football was the thing that I loved the most. It was my passion. It's where I got my confidence and uh, where I learned resilience. I got reinforcement from everybody around me, you know, how talented I was. And it became my identity. It became... Bill Burke, the athlete, the football player, the quarterback. And that lasted not just for a short period of time, but for essentially 16 years of organized football. And then all of a sudden, you mentioned the, the Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st, 2000, the day that that ended and the day that I realized that I wasn't going to be able to play at the next level, all the lights went out, so to speak, and everything faded away. There were no more stadiums. There were no more autograph sessions. There were no more interviews. Uh, so that's kind of jarring to digest as a you know 23 year old uh, who just had this love for his entire life and then you know all goes away uh, essentially and so I know there are so many other athletes out there um, that are going through a similar experience that might not have something to rely on or somebody to go to because as athletes we are taught to suck it up when when times get tough and to just figure it out and and so I think that a lot of athletes really needed something uh, tangible to be able to rely on. And my hope is that they can pull out one word or phrase or even chapter just to give them a little hope or direction. Because um, I know a lot of them are out there and maybe they're, they're kind of going through some hard times, but in a silent way without having anybody uh, in terms of a support system to rely on. So, you know, personally, I just wanted to accomplish something that was going to last forever, you know, hopefully beyond me. And one of the lessons I learned from Nick Saban was doing the hard things and seeing it through. So I, I committed to doing it. Uh, it took me two years. Um, and uh, regardless of, you know, how it's received or, or who gets to read it, I at least can say that, you know, I did the hard thing and, and finished the drill, so to speak. And Bill, how are you structuring the book and some of the key takeaways? Yeah, uh, well, as I mentioned, you know, Nick Saban's inspiration was uh, a big part of the framework for the book. And I mentioned how he let us know that, you know, each football play is like sticking your hand in the fire for six seconds. So I use this fire framework uh, for the book, which comes down to how to apply, you know, your, your uh, approach in terms of reaching your goals. So number one, the F stands for fierce knowledge. Um, the I is in inspired intention, uh, relentless action, and then uh, epic focus. So that's kind of the framework of the book. But, you know, a lot of the other things, uh, we talked about the identity issue of former athletes and, you know, one chapter, one phase coming to a close. So I also want people to ask themselves what I call the burning question, which is, who could I become? You know, who could you become if you weren't afraid of making that phone call or reaching out to that person or trying something new? You know, who could you become in your next chapter I think a lot of times, you know, we put these artificial ceilings on what we can really do. 
So I encourage people to, uh, you know, think about another simple formula, which I love because it's just, uh, it's simplicity uh, allows people to follow it in a simple way, but it's also inspiring. And that's dreams, decisions, and discipline. And your dreams are the destination. Your decisions are the directions to get there. And discipline is really the difference. And that's kind of something that I use in my own life to think about and plan and chase you know, my big dreams and my goals uh, for myself and my family. I love that, Bill. And I think you want to say, too, I hear a lot of things in here that non-athletes can take from as well. Absolutely. There's a lot of parallels. And to my surprise, I've gotten feedback from people that have read the book that weren't athletes. Uh, One person just worked a corporate job for 40 years, and then one day it was all over. And, you know, his whole life looked a little differently. So uh, he can relate. You know, I've heard from uh, former military who have the same, you know, sort of issues that athletes do. Um, it's just been really amazing to get that, that feedback. And I think in the business world, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of little tasks that maybe we don't love to do, but we know that will drive our production forward. And so you can relate those to sticking your hand in the fire for six seconds. You know, how long does it take to, to dial a prospect? Uh, you know, if you're in sales, six seconds, you know, yeah, it's uncomfortable and yeah, you're going to feel a little pain and uneasiness, but, uh, that's just what you have to do. And don't worry about the result of that call, but just, complete that task and reset and, and do it again. So I think there's a lot of parallels and I'm, I've got a lot of interest now in, in, in coaching some people, both in business and in sports. And uh, of course, doing some speaking around not only the things I've learned at Michigan State, but the things that I've actively sought out to learn, you know, beyond my career here as well. I really want to encourage people too. And because I'm a Spartan, anybody listening to this, I'd love to, uh, to gift the book um, to anybody that would like to get their hands on it. Just got to pay a nominal shipping and handling fee. But if you want to check that out, it's at uh, outsidethearena.com slash free book. Awesome. And you can also find it on amazon.com. Of course, it's Victory Outside the Arena by Bill Burke. How athletes can go from isolated to inspired once the applause begins to fade. And, and Bill, I got to ask you, the world of college football is just seem, seemingly changing by the day. You didn't get to take advantage of things like NIL or the transfer portal, but just your sense of where it all is and where it's going, what do you like, what do you don't like? Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy new world. It, it's tough to keep up with because it's changing every day. Um, you know, I, I think the, uh, you know, it's tough for me because, you know, I, I grew up in a different world, right. you know, and it's, it's I'm, I can't, I don't want to bash it. Uh, I certainly am an advocate for the players receiving some sort of compensation. You know, when I played, it just felt like something was off, uh, even then, you know, giving the media coverage that we had and, you know, the things that uh, were being sold, uh, you know, that were maybe close to our likeness or similar to that. So uh, I'm all for the players being compensated. I think there's a, you know, a huge market for what they do. It's obviously very popular. The uh, TV contracts alone are in the billions now. So I just think there needs to be some structure, some leadership around it. Um, I worry about the opportunities for high school kids coming out who want to play it, it in college just because now, and it's understandable that some schools might take a look at a transfer guy uh, over a high school guy because they've seen him prove himself at the college level. So there's a lot of things, I think, to be ironed out, um, but I still love the game. I think it's so special, especially with the game itself being affiliated and connected to universities, which are emotionally so uh, – you know, a part of fans and alumni. Um, it's just, uh, it's a special part of my life. And I know the same can be said for so many. So I'm still going to be a fan. I'm still going to show up and watch it on TV and cheer for the players and advocate for the players. Um, and I know the coaches overall around the country care so much about the players. I think that's one of the things that really gets lost. Sometimes people watching from a distance really think that the coaches are just trying to win games and make money and, and save their jobs. But these guys are really teachers at heart. I, I think they care immensely about the players, and I don't think that's talked about enough. So um, everybody's, I, I think, got their hearts in the right place, uh, hopefully. Um, but I think some changes need to be made, and I think some leadership really needs to step up uh, in the future. Great answer. Bill Burke, thank you for joining me today, and all the best on victory outside the arena. Well, I will leave you with just two words, Russ. Go green. Go white. And I'm Russ White. This is MSU Today. Find, rate, and subscribe to MSU Today with Russ White on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your shows.
And please feel free to share this episode if you're so inclined. Thank you for listening to MSU Today.